Okay, today we're gonna work on uh, Hawk, Swainson's Hawk. Um, we've got a roadkill juvenile Swainson's Hawk here, which I believe it's a male. And um, actually they're very, very pretty, especially uh, the color on their back, um, the shingle feathers on their shoulder. Makes a pretty nice looking hawk out of them. Anyway, so as you can see, we're carving out the neck, and um, I, I like to cut my necks out of larger foam and cut them into the uh, proper circumference with my uh, Dremel tool, and then make the right measurements and attach them to the skull. I remember a while ago I read somewhere in one of the taxidermy forums that some people didn't really like these foams to be used for necks because they couldn't really attach them to the skull in any shape or form. So um, I think they're actually quite simple. So I'm, I'm measuring the neck right now to, to create the proper S, S shape of the neck. and. Um, I like to cut them in an angle, so by the time I attach them to the skull, it gives me the right curve. And um, creating the S curve in uh, basically inside the neck skin is very important. And also uh, about attaching the the neck to the cast that skull as you can see here I'm, I'm using hot glue hot glue actually it melts and fuses the foam neck into the casted resin so it, it creates a really good bonding and um, it's been working very well for me so the neck as you can see is going to be glued with hot glue and then we're gonna move on to uh, installing the eyes and cleaning up the eye sockets. Yeah, in my newer videos, I'm trying to put the camera behind me so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, although it's gonna be a little bit still tough to see exactly because uh, um, it's one of those things that maybe you know it would be best to to basically teach it in person but anyway I'll try to show more this actually this hawk was done a long time ago and um, it was one of the videos that uh, I forgot to um, basically narrate and put them on on my channel here but I mean I found them in my uh, in my archive and I still have a lot more bird videos my newer videos are gonna be a little bit different so uh, like uh, the angle of the video uh, or the camera for uh, applying the eyes and whatnot so anyway the the skin is uh, totally prepped and washed and soaked in the chemicals and uh, right now we're putting in the neck and bringing the skin around the face slowly and carefully so we can glue it all around the beak where the uh, where the skin has been originally uh, peeled off of the skull and I'm using crazy glue medium crazy glue it's not gel and it's not very thin it's kind of like medium consistency so it's the best um, the brand of glue I'm using it's called Gorilla I've had very good luck with them and I'm applying very little all around of the beak and um, where the skin needs to be glued back on and uh, I start from forehead one spot in the forehead and then I go under the chin so I secure both top and bottom and then I find the corners corners of the beak corners of the mouth and I put one spot of glue in there one drop of glue in there and, and uh, glue that spot 
and then I move around to um, other areas between those areas that we you know made a contact initially and I try to be quite symmetric so basically I squirt some crazy glue on top of a plate as you can see on top of this little plastic jar here and then with um, with a pin I apply I pick some glue off of that plastic jar and I apply it around the area that I want to put it on so I've seen some people are using um, syringe or uh, very fine nozzle crazy glue from tubes I don't have much luck with them because they dry up on me and I don't like them so I rather use a needle and a little bit of a squirt on top of a plastic jar or anywhere so I can carry it from there and apply it to where I want to apply it to now the skull is fully glued on to the skin now we're going to insert the wing wires and the wing wires are going through the hole of the um, ulna ulna bone of the wing and then taped up around the humerus so the last part of the wing doesn't necessarily need to have any wiring either in flying mode or a flying pose or in standing pose so um, as you can see the hole has been there before I have applied the holes to to blow out the marrow and that's the same hole that I used to push the wire in the wing wire in and tape it up in some mounts you will notice that I I wrap some material like cotton or cotton batting or some sort of material to raise or create a little bit of a muscle on the humerus bone but in, in some mounts I, I rather leave it alone and uh, do not build any muscle in there on the leg bones on the drumstick if you notice this this one was broken and I attached a piece of wood to match it up to the proper length so the wire goes through the back of the foot goes right behind the tarsus and goes out from the bottom and then we tape up the rest and of course we repeat the same thing on the other leg Now we're getting to the second leg. The bone on this one, the drumstick bone on this one, on this leg you can see is uh, intact, but the first one was kind of broken due to the road impact. Most of these birds coming to me as road killed, so there's always some sort of a damage to their bones. My wires are all sharpened on both ends so it makes it quite easy and actually um, it's important to let you know that I pre-measure length of my wires before I use them on my mounts so now we're inserting the uh, body into the mount into the skin I mean we start I like to start with the neck and then with both wings as I said these videos are old and they're not uh, made the same way I make my today's video you also notice that on this hawk I have used some uh, material to to create some sort of a muscle for the humerus part of the wing the white uh, material that you see is a cotton batting so I'm trying to basically watch the video along with you and just narrate over it so 
a lot of things that I think I had done on this one in one way I noticed that I haven't done it that way so because there's there's different ways of doing the same things and I don't necessarily always follow the same procedure it really depends on the mounts and what I want to do the position and everything so if you notice that um, before I push in the uh, the leg wire I leave some for the thigh bone to the same measurements that I've made before this was another question that someone asked me and the answer is yes we leave some thigh bone uh, wire for freedom of the uh, basically leg movement when we want to pose the hawk or any bird if you have um, thigh bone wires pre-measured and left in the body it'll allow you as you can see it'll allow you to move the legs quite freely to the right place so they're, they're not locked in in one spot so we pull the skin over slowly and start sewing it up. A piece of U-wire is always used for the tail. And that secures the tail. This video is coming to an end. Thank you very much for watching and we'll continue on the second part.